Um, I was brought up um, in a, a normal um, working class uh, background. Um, my mum was a midwife, my dad was a heating engineer, um, and they weren't particularly religious. Um, although they brought us up with quite strong morals, um, you know, to be hard working, honest, um, good manners, um, I suppose just normal things like that. Um, I had I suppose, a fairly normal childhood. I used to enjoy I suppose, swimming, um, I did a bit of horse riding, I, I really enjoyed dancing. Um, so those were the, the main things. I also played the piano for for quite a while, um, from about age eight to twelve. I suppose I, I learned the piano. I was always, um, I suppose, described as a fairly quiet, quietly confident person um, from a young age. Um, sometimes I could be quite shy. I was usually very well behaved, at, you know, at home and at school. Um, just used to get on with my schoolwork and do as, do as I was told. I, we did go to Sunday school, me and my, my brother, for a, a short time when I was about three or four. And I remember enjoying that and we used to learn about Bible stories and, and things like that. Um, and we only stopped going because I think my mum and dad were too busy with work. Um, after that, we never really um, were involved much in, in any church um, until I reached about the age of 10 and one of my, my best friends was getting confirmed in the Church of England so I, I did that with her and um, just to keep her company really um, and from then on I started to get more and more involved in the church, I used to go regularly um, and I, I learned I suppose quite a lot about Christianity and, and the Bible. I went to church, um, I suppose regularly from about age 10 to um, about 15, 16. Um, I would say, I, you know, I believed in God, I believed in the devil, I believed in heaven, hell. Um, although none of the um, Holy Trinity concept made sense because um, it was like you have God and you have the Son of God, Jesus, so what was this third thing? Was it the, the ghost of Jesus after he died and been resurrected? So I remember being confused, who, who do I pray to? You know, do I pray to Jesus or to God or this spirit? Um, so, you know, it's hard to follow your life um, with something that didn't completely make sense. Um, and that's when I started to question Christianity and, um, you know, my religion, I suppose. I definitely believed in God and I would have called myself a Christian. So I'd, I suppose I just thought by going to church it was like a, a connection with God. Um, and as I got older, I started to lose that, it, it just stopped making sense. I just felt like nobody was listening to, you know, to my prayers when I was going to church. I, I wasn't getting that sense that there was something, you know, holy there. Um, I had my heart set at one point on becoming a doctor and I wanted to, to go to medical school. And all through school, I'd studied so hard, all through college, um, you know, I'd maybe like given up going out with friends, you know, so so that I could get schoolwork done and things like that. Um, and when I didn't actually get accepted into medical school, even even though my grades were, were pretty good, um, that turned turned my world upside down. Um, you know, you 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 had this I had this plan for my life um, that I dreamed of and all of a sudden I knew it, it definitely wasn't going to happen so um, that was one thing I remember sort of feeling quite depressed when that happened. Um, I was at university supposed to be having the best time of my life going out drinking, clubbing um, 
but at the end of it all, there was just that empty feeling in, of, of life at the end of the day. Like, why are we here? I would say I'd, I'd pretty much become an atheist. Um, I, um, I, I became an atheist, I suppose, because I just felt like Christianity didn't have the answers. Um, as it, it was corrupted, I, I hadn't really looked into any other religions at that point. I just, I suppose, I just started to live my life um, as as I wanted to, I suppose, without any specific direction or purpose. Um, just to, you know, to have fun. Um, I would go out drinking. Um, I had boyfriends, just like any I suppose normal um, eighteen-year-old girl at that time. Um, but I found life was full of problems, full of obstacles. Um, that that sort of lifestyle didn't make me happy. Um, I think um, that probably 99% of people in Britain probably are depressed, or at least at some point. Um, I know that the, the number of people taking antidepressants at the moment is very, very high. Um, and I think there's a lot of people just the same. Maybe they're, they're okay until something does happen in the life where it, they are tested and they, they then don't have that religion to fall back on. So it's very easy for them to become depressed um, because I suppose that the, the life is, is quite empty, lonely, they don't have answers. Before I went to college, I would say I never really um, knew any Muslim people um, and I had some quite ignorant views of what you know Islam was. Um, for example, if I saw a woman with a hijab on, I used to feel sorry for her. I used to think, oh, you know, what, what a poor girl, a woman, um, you know, her, her family must have made aware that um, basically I thought that you know they were oppressed. Um, other than that I, I never had really thought much about what Muslim people really believed in. Um, I knew they were associated with terrorism um, and 9-11 and, and things like that um, but I never really you know took much notice um, and then when I was in college um, so 16, 17 I became quite good friends with a, a girl. She was um, originally from Sudan and um, she was Muslim and she was just one of the, the nicest people I'd ever met. She was so open, honest um, and then I got another surprise when I, I went to a house because I used to, to stay over there quite a lot and her mum used to treat me as if I was a, another daughter, just one of the family. Um, even her, her sisters, and I think she had one brother, they were all the same, really warm, welcoming. So ev even though at this point I was introduced to a, a Muslim family, um, I, I still didn't really take much notice of the actual religion. I didn't think, oh yeah, Islam is something that I need to look into further. Um, but looking back now, I, I remember being you know, very impressed, um, and I suppose at the time I maybe thought this was just a one-off, this was just her and her family. Um, but actually I, I now realise it had a lot to do with the fact that they were Muslims and, and that was the way they treated people, not just, you know, me. This is how it teaches you to, to welcome people into your house, um, to be good hosts, to be polite, um, just, you know, good manners. Um. After I'd, I'd met this friend, um, I, I was just, I suppose, more comfortable with with what a, a Muslim was. When I was at university, um, I actually got friendly with someone from Saudi Arabia, and they found out that I had been brought up um, with a Christian background. I knew quite a lot about the Bible and things, so they actually started to really ask me a lot of questions um, about, I suppose, what was 
the same in Christianity and Islam or what was different. So through, through those conversations, I started to learn a lot about Islam um, without really realising it at first. And I don't think he ever actually in, intended to um, sort of preach to me and, you know, make me um, revert. Um, and it, even just simple things, um, like really open my eyes. Because it, I think before that I'd been very ignorant um, towards Islam. I just classed it as a, another like nonsense religion. Um, and the more I learnt about Islam um, from those conversations, the, sort of the more shocked I was. I, I became very interested in it. Um, I started to watch documentaries, films, um, I read books, um, I actually read books about the corruption of Christianity as well as Islamic texts and then I was given the Quran and I started to read that and I was just amazed by the Quran. Um, th there was nothing in it to me that um, said Islam was, you know, a, a religion promoting terrorism, um, all the, the sort of ideas I'd had about Islam in the past were completely wiped away um, and I suppose just from learning about that it, I decided I, I couldn't ignore it, I, I just had to, to follow it. It was just like a, a change in my heart. When I started to learn about Islam, um, I realised then that ev everything was for a reason, everything had answers. Um, what we have planned is not necessarily what Allah has planned for us. And it, in fact, you, you often learn in the future, things have worked out for the best. So I think it, I must have reverted, I think it was about the end of 2004, 2005. Um, I remember I was actually watching a documentary um, and it was about um, an English woman actually who had reverted herself and she talked about how before that her life was, um, I suppose like a, a lot of other um, English girls, um, she'd had it, I think if I remember correctly, she'd had a bit of trouble with like drinking and sort of getting in trouble and, and hanging about with like groups. Um, and she'd, I think she had actually a Pakistani boyfriend um, and she ended up marrying him in the end and, and she learned about um, Islam and she just completely transformed her life and she she was saying how um thing you know how her life is now better how it's improved um she talked about a lot of things um so i, I suppose from that I, I thought well if this this woman has become a muslim and i suppose what she was describing was kind of similar to to me um and her life has become better in in that way I saw something inside me just for I, I want to be Muslim I, I really have to do this um, and that's when I started to to tell like friends and, and a few people around me um, some of them were quite dismissive um, as if oh like really um, is this not just like a little fad uh, you know, um, they didn't exactly, but I think they kind of, well, if, if you are genuine, that's, that's nice. But, um, the, the Saudi friend, he was over the moon. Um, I think he was shocked. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was over the moon. He encouraged me. But then another friend actually put me off and said, oh, you couldn't do that. You wouldn't be able to pray five times a day. Um, you won't be able to stop drinking. Your family will never accept it. Um, it, he, he wasn't practicing and he was like, if I can't do it, you certainly can't do it, sort of thing. It just kind of made me feel like, well, if, if 
he can react like that, how many other people are going to react like that? Because, like, we know, we know that just because somebody is a Muslim, it doesn't necessarily mean they um, are a good a good person. They they might call themselves a Muslim, and um, so I was a bit worried about maybe going to see um, an imam or or someone in the mosque and getting told to, you know to get lost or, or something. I mean, the chance of that happening is obviously very very slight. Um, but that I I was still a bit worried about getting accepted, as well as by other Muslims, um, as well as non-Muslim people. When when I first became Muslim, I didn't um, put the hijab on, so to be honest, people, they can't really tell. Um, unless it actually comes up in conversation, like um, maybe someone would say, well, would you like to go out for a drink? Um, and I would say, actually, no, I'm, I'm Muslim now, sorry, I, I don't go out drinking anymore, I can go for a coffee with you, or, you know, pizza at the cinema, something like that. Um, and I actually found a, a lot of people then wouldn't bother with me. Um, it's kind of like, oh, well, if, if you're not going to come out and get drunk with us, then we, we don't really want to meet up with you anyway. So that was a bit hard to deal with. So a lot of friends I'd had in the past all of a sudden were not interested in me anymore. Um, I suppose even sort of people at, at work, um, you know, after work they, they'd all be saying, oh, we're going to the pub for a drink. And obviously I wouldn't be included in that. Um, so that was sometimes, you know, made you feel a bit a bit lonely, a bit left out. Um, when I did actually start to wear the hijab, um, I felt like people at work didn't really have a problem with it, or at least not to my face. Um, I, th I think because of my job, they, they then know, oh, well, well she's like a, an educated woman. Um, I, I don't know if it was something to do with that, so that they treated me quite nicely with respect, but I found if I'm walking in the street or say in the, the supermarket, I get a lot of people looking at me, and some of them, um, I would say, quite in a quite a negative way. I've had the odd um, thing shouted at me, maybe from across the street. Um, so that that kind of puts you off a little bit. Um, doesn't make you feel quite comfortable. Um, but it, again, it. it it depends where I am. If if I'm in my local town, um, no matter what, people always stare. Um, I would say most people are, are a bit pleasant. I say there's the odd one or two that will shout things. Um, but if I go sort of 20 minutes away into Middlesbrough, which does have quite a large um, Muslim population, it's completely different. I, if I walk down the street, nobody even blinks an eye if I've got my hijab on, um, which is lovely. You just you just fit in, um, so that's quite nice. Since I reverted to Islam um, in about 2005, 2006, I um, have been married and I've had a son, and this is him, Yusuf. He's 18 months, and my life is definitely changed for the better since becoming a Muslim and um, I have a much more focus in my life and um, a lot of that is, as well is due to being guided from the Quran. Um, so I do, I do use the Quran um, as I say for my daily life. Um, if I'm having problems in my life, if, if I want to look for answers, um, I know that I'll find it in the Quran. Um, as well, what I find is, is sometimes you'll read something in the Quran like one day, one time, and you'll get a certain meaning from it. Um, and then you, you might sort of find you read it again in a few months, and you can get a, a different meaning from it. Um, not that it contradicts itself, but 
it's just it's so amazing it's so complex um it's not just uh, you know a book like a collection of stories like the bible it, it is something to live your life by basically and um, my advice to anybody who hasn't read the quran i would say definitely not to dismiss it as you know a, a nonsense religion um it's not full of violence or, or hatred um, towards non-Muslims. It's not telling people to go and, um, you know, become terrorists and, and blow themselves up in the name of Islam. It, it's just not like that. Um, it is a peaceful religion, and if you read the whole Quran, you will you will see, you will understand um, all the the context um, to different things. Um, my advice to somebody um, that is thinking about reverting to Islam, I would say just go for it. Don't don't hesitate. Don't don't worry um, about you know what people are going to think and and say, um, because in the end, Allah will will help you. He'll be there. Islam to me is, um, it's like a, a way of life um, and I feel like um, it's something you, you can't ignore. Once, once you've learnt about Islam, you can't just go back to the normal way of living um, because it, it just doesn't make sense anymore. Um, so the, there's so many things that I, I get from being a Muslim, just um, I get like a, a sense of peace in my life, um, comfort, any sort of questions that you have about your life, you, you can open the Quran and you will find answers. It just takes away all that 